it just heavily. But, um, uh, you know, the, the world commercializes this time of the year. But uh, this is the time of the year that the church ought to just capitalize on. And I want to help you a little bit with the Christmas holidays. If you celebrate, and I use the word holidays in the Christmas season, uh, if you celebrate the way the world wants you to celebrate, you'll be left empty, you'll be left worn out, and you'll be left bankrupt as well this Christmas season. And we want to help you in our church to have a good Christmas. I mean it. I'm, I'm not just uh, saying that today, but we really want to be a help to you and to your families, to your friends, to your neighbors this Christmas season. And I'll tell you the way to do that is, is really much more simple than people think, and that is to make Christ first. And we really want to do that this time of the year. Let me just mention something that I usually mention every time this year, and that is that this year, at this time, there are people, Christians, are doing very well. But I'll tell you something with regard to the world. This is the most depressing, most discouraging time of the year that it just possibly could be. This is a time of year when people begin to evaluate their year and they look at, uh, they look at what they've accomplished in the year and they look back at it and they're usually very disappointed. When they look at their relationships, they usually, this is a time of year many people really understand how, how they've, in many senses, how they've destroyed their opportunities and lost opportunities. And boy, I was just thinking on Thanksgiving, we had church family at our house for Thanksgiving uh, Day and just thinking about how the wonderful time of fellowship we had. But you know, I was thinking the other day, just I think I was driving down Commercial Boulevard, about all the Thanksgivings that someone is not there because of something that's wrong. And all the, you know, I was thinking, you know, this Thanksgiving is probably the first Thanksgiving that a mother and father weren't at the same table for Thanksgiving dinner. It's probably the first Thanksgiving that maybe a son wasn't invited back because he'd hurt his family too much and they just couldn't stand to be around him for that Thanksgiving. And, and the, here there, there's an empty seat there and the family's hurting and the son is somewhere else and he can't be there and he's hurting. Uh, and But you just don't know the situations that are going on. But at this time of the year is a time of year that, that suicides are at a record high. Yeah. It's a time of the year uh, when people are just depressed and discouraged but not God's people. Right. Not God's people, not the church. And this is a time of the year that our lights ought to shine. And I just mean it. This is a time of the year that we ought to put aside all these things. We ought to preach Christ like never before. You're going to find that th there are just opportunities because of the season. God is preparing and, and putting people in the place they need to be in order to hear the gospel. <coughs> and I just think that this week and every week all the way through Christmas and through New Year's, that we as a church ought to be looking for those people who, whose life circumstances has got them ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so this is, this is our time. We've had a good year for our church. We've just, uh, you know, we were talking, I was talking to several of our men this week about just the things the Lord has done this year. It's been a wonderful year. But, you know, the, the, the best is how you end and how you finish. Mm -hmm. And so we've got some things in our church that we want to do to help you. And I'm just telling you, you can do it the world's way through the Christmas season, or you can do it God's way. If you do it God's way, it'll just it'll, you'll be ready for next year, and uh, you'll do, things will be wonderful. We need to preach the gospel, and we're going to try to help you with that. We have we'll have a soul winning every day uh, through the rest of the year. We'd love to have you come out and take part in that opportunity. Uh, in the process of ordering, we're going to get three thousand Christmas tracks that we'll be able to get out, and just Christmas themed tracks. And boy, good opportunity when someone wouldn't re normally receive a tract, but it's Christmas time and you've got a Christmas tract. And so we, we'll have some of those by the end of this week, Lord willing, available for us. Uh, we're going to be doing our uh, Christmas caroling and our evangelistic Christmas caroling where we take around a, just a Christmas packet door to door as we sing from house to house. It's dark out. It's not a good time of the year to knock on doors, but it's a great time to have candles and a group of people singing and singing Christmas carols and give somebody a nice gift that says Merry Christmas from Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church with a hot chocolate and a candy cane and a uh, Christmas card and the gospel. And uh, so just, just wonderful opportunities. And I want to ask you to commit to giving God this Christmas season. I really want, this is something that's really, we, we usually want to do, but I mean this Christmas, let's give it to the Lord. And I'm not going to ask you to um, not celebrate the, the way the world does, but consider this year just investing everything in the Lord's work at Christmas time. And one of the things you'll find out is that you will just be full. And you'll realize, hey, hey, it's about Jesus. It, it's about Jesus. And I understand giving gifts and that sort of thing. The precedent was set. But let's give to Jesus. It's his birthday. 
and uh, they, that we're celebrating. Let's just make this Christmas season one of the most wonderful, and we ought to be the warmest, the most welcoming uh, church for those individuals that need Jesus Christ. And I believe that if we will commit it to the Lord, and that we will commit our time and, and everything, the focus of it this Christmas season to the Lord, we just have, are going to see the Lord work, and we'll see 2010 just in very strong and with uh, God's people, uh, though this church being strengthened like it's never been before, and people getting <coughs> saved like we've never seen before, and that'd be a good way to start 2011, I think. Well, uh, a couple things that I want to just mention by way of announcement. We do have Thursday evening Christmas caroling, and that'll be at 645. I've asked people to give me some feedback on the best night for them, and nobody has mentioned anything at all about it, so I just scheduled it for Thursday based upon what I prefer, and uh, so I have a sign-up sheet right over by where Brother Tony is on the sound table, and you can sign up just letting us know you'll be there. We need to make plans. We need to know uh, what kind of a group we're going to have Thursday evening, so sign up. Go ahead and commit to being there Thursday night, and then beside that, is a, an empty blank slot that gives, and it, it is so that you could write in your best time that to go Christmas caroling next week. And so if you can go this week, please sign up, and then along with that, tell, let us know what day would be best for you next week. If you can't go this week, at least go by and sign up what day would be ne best for you next week. And so I just sometimes just have to do things uh, based upon conjecture, but it'll be a little more educated guess next week of the best times to go out. And we'll go as many days as, as we have the people to go out with it. And it's a lot of fun. If you haven't here been Christmas caroling with us as a church, that's a blast, isn't it? We, uh, we dress up um, like it's cold out, you know, little not as extreme as you would in some places. And uh, we, we decorate the church van with Christmas lights and uh, sing. And, and here's how we do it. I'll just let you know so you know how to go Thursday night. When it is 6.45, we start singing Christmas carols regardless of where we're standing. So we'll probably meet up here. And at 6.45, we start singing Christmas carols. We stop singing Christmas carols when we get back here and we're finished. And it'll only be like 45 minutes to an hour that will go out because your voices can only last so long. And so, but it, it is so much fun. We get in the, we get in the, or we start singing here and we just, no talking, nobody says anything. We go down to the church van, everybody's got their Christmas light. Get in the van, we're still singing Christmas carols. We sing while we're on our way there. We get out of the van, no talking, still singing, and go down the street. We don't talk to the people. We knock on their doors. We knock on the door. We give them a gift. We sing Christmas carols. We sing a, finish singing the verse of the song we're singing, sing another song, and then sing We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and go to the next house. And you'd be amazed what we can accomplish in a short amount of time if we do it. And it's just so much fun. I'm just excited about it right now. So you come, be here Thursday night, no matter what you have to do to get here.